بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد in the درس about عقيدة الوسطية we reach the point where Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah was using or as evidence Surah Al Ikhlas to show the principle of negating shirk and negating associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his asma'i wa sifat and affirming those sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his divine names and attributes as he subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran and in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and we mentioned Surah Al-Ikhlas in the last uh, sitting and now I want to briefly uh, go over what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said regarding uh, Ayatul Kursi Ayatul Kursi Qala Shaykh al-Islam rahimahullah ta'ala wa ma wasafa bihi nafsuhu fi a'dham al-ayah fi kitabihi haytha yuqool الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديه أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء واسعه كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وَهُوَ عَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فِي كِتَابِهِ الْكَرِيمُ in Ayatul Kursi which is the greatest verse of the Qur'an as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam illustrated for us but first let's go to the Ibarra what Shaykh al-Islam said he said وَمَا وَصَفَ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ فِي أَعْظَمَ آيَةٍ مِنْ فِي كِتَابِهِ هَيْثَ يُقُوهُ so this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how he described himself in the greatest verse of the Quran, which is Ayatul Kursi. Go ahead, close that. And Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, Fi Kitabi al Karim, in Ayatul Kursi, He said, Allah, la ilaha illahuwa, none has a right to be worshipped except Him. The ever living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. Neither slumber nor sleep overtakes him. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on earth. Who is he that can intercede with him except with his permission? He knows what happens to them in this world, meaning his creatures, and what will happen to them in the hereafter. And they will never compass anything of his knowledge except that which he wills. His kursi extends over the heavens and the earth and he feels no fatigue in guarding and preserving them and he is the most high, the most great. It was narrated in Sahih Muslim in the hadith of Ubay bin Kaab that the Prophet wasallam asked him which verse in the Quran is the greatest? He replied, Allah and his Prophet know better. Wasallam. The Prophet wasallam answered by saying, uh, the Prophet wasallam repeated the question again and again. And each time he got the same reply. Then he said, Obey. That verse is Ayatul Kursi. Then the Prophet wasallam placed his hand on his shoulder and said, Oh Abu Mundir, you must be happy to learn this. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then in the narration of Ahmed contains that the Prophet wasallam said, I swear in the name of the one who holds my soul in his possession. This verse has a tongue and two lips which describe the glorification of Allah near his throne. So that shows us the greatness of Ayatul Kursi. And it also illustrates for us what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala was showing us that the verse contains, and many of the verses in the Qur'an, this is the, the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that he establishes that principle of nafi wal that he negates, the nafi meaning negation, that he negates 
uh, that there's anything worthy of worship except him, and he negates any and all forms of shirk, regardless of whether that be in al asmai wa sifat his divine names and attributes, that he shares no partner, or where, whether it be rububiya or, or uluhiya, I mean the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his, uh, his uluhiya, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates that anything is worth, anything is worship, uh, should be, or uh, is worthy of worship besides Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is contained in Ayatul Kursi. And it also negates those characteristics which are befitting of someone uh, who is mustahik bil ibadah uh, or lil ibadah, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mustahik lil ibadah. Meaning that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. As uh, Ibn Kathir said in his tafsir uh, regarding the verse where Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala speaks about his beautiful creation, or min ayati al wa nahar, the verse in which Ibn Kathir, at the end, he explained and he said, uh, you know, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala huwa mustahik lil ibadah wa kama qal. So this shows us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. And it affirms that principle. So it negates shirk and it affirms what? <clears throat> it affirms tawheed. It affirms Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes. That aspect of tawheed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the surah, he began with actually a negation. La, he said, Allahu, la ilaha illahu. He, he began with Allah. Uh, about his his own name, Allah, uh, uh, Allah, and he said, "La ilaha illa huwa," that there is nothing worthy of worship except Him, Subhanahu wa Taala. So there, that contains that contains both nafi and ithbat. It contains nafi that it negates all uh, false worship to other than Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and it has ithbat. It affirms the worship of Allah Subhanahu. That all worship belongs to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and that's just in the beginning of Ayatul uh, Kursi. Allahu la ilaha illa al Hayyu al Qayyum. Sheikh Salim bin Fawzan, rahimahullah Taala, he mentions. He says, Al Hayy, ay al Daim al Baqi, al Ladi lahu kimal hayat, wal Ladi la sabil lil fana alayhi. So. Sheikh Salim bin Fawzan, half of the law Ta'ala, he says, al hay when describing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine attribute, al hay you know, the, the one who gives life, the one who's li who is the, who, who will live forever, who does not die. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the meaning of al hay is that, uh, that he is the ever living, and that he has the perfect life, meaning that his life will not end. As his creation, uh, their life is limited. Our lives are limited. Our lives are mahdud. Our lives will end. And we will all taste death, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Kullu nafsin da'ikatul mawt. Every soul shall taste, uh, shall taste death. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al hay. And then the Shaykh explained al qayyum he said, "I, al qaim, al qaimu bi nafsihi al muqim li ghairihi, fa huwa ghaniyun an an khalkihi, wa al khalkuhu muhtajun ilay." So the Sheikh said, when explaining al qayyum, that it means al qaim bi nafsihi al muqim li ghairihi. That means that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala al qayyum. It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He Himself is not in need of anyone or anything. And that everything is dependent upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is in need of Allah. He does not need anything, and everything needs Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that He is independent and self sufficient from His, his creation. And his creation is totally dependent upon him. al Hayyul Qayyum. And that it is one of the greatest names, as was mentioned in an authentic hadith, 
uh, that the servant can make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this name. So it's one of the greatest names to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the greatest sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that a, uh, a person can supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, by, in order to receive ijabah, in order to receive uh, an answer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course we all want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer us in our dua, in our supplication. And these are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we mentioned in our previous dars, al hay and we mentioned this before, ala sifat al dhatiyah wa dilalat al qayyum ala sifat al fi'liya So al hay as we mentioned, the ever-living, is one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat al dhatiyah Those are sifat that describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Those are attributes of Allah that describe himself. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. al hay the ever-living. And Al-Qayyum, Wadalatu Al-Qayyum, Ala Sifat Fi'liya, Sifat Al-Qayyum is one of the Sifat Fi'liya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is independent of His creation, but His creation is in need of Him, so He fulfills their needs. So this is Al-Qayyum, this is a Sifat Fi'liya, because this involves action. This is one of the actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He uh, gives His servant and supplies His servant or His servants with their needs. Al-Qayyum. So that is what? Sifat Fi'liya. And then the Shaykh Hafidh Allah Ta'ala, he said, لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم السنة نعاس وهو نوم خفيف So Shaykh Salih bin Fazan, he explained that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لا تأخذه سنة A سنة This refers to a very light sleep. This is a very light sleep. This is a very light sleep. Uh, type of sleep, uh, of resting. Well, a gnome, and gnome is a deep sleep, is, is sleeping. But uh, a sinna is like to rest, or like a, a very, uh, as we mentioned, a, a very light sleep. And then the Sheikh mentioned that, as uh, is mentioned in the authentic hadith, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wasil kursiyuhu samawati wal ard about his kursi. That his kursi, one of the statements of the salaf is that in the al arsh, that the kursi is the arsh, that it's the throne. Waqil in the ghayruhu. And some of the salaf said that it's it's other than the arsh. And say that it is it's also mentioned that it's the mold al qadamain, that it's the place of of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's feet. It's the place of the, the Qadamain. So those are some of the aqwal of the Salaf. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum, Ridwanallahi alayhim ajma'in. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wuhu aliyu. Ay luhu alu al mutlaq alu of that be konihi folka jimil makhlukat. So here the Shaykh explains when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wuhuwa aliyun, meaning this refers to the alu of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is above all of his creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his creation. And this is something with uh, a lot of the mutakallimeen, those groups which, the, and those sects like the Asha'ira, beginning with the Jahamiya, the Mu'tazila, the Asha'ira, the Karamiya, the Maturidiya, that many of them, they reject this alu of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because then they say you're putting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a, in a makan or in a place. But in fact, Ahl Sunnah, as we mentioned in the beginning of our dars, in, our, in the beginning of this, our lessons in Aqidah Tawasatiyah, that as Shaykh al-Islam first and foremost mentions, that Ahl Sunnah, أثبت ما أثبت الله بنفسه 
واثبت ما اثبت رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم على uh, على الله or عن الله سبحانه وتعالى so اهل السنه they affirm what Allah affirms about himself and they negate what Allah negates about himself as we mention in this verse in this very verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself these are his attributes Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum so Allah affirms for himself what what are his attributes al hay al qayyum those are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes that he possesses al hayat kamil uh, a kamal his his hayat he is the everlasting he does not die and he is al qayyum meaning that his creatures need him, his creation needs him, but he is free from them. And he is the one who uh, gives them their needs, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means that what Allah affirms for himself, those attributes. So Ahlul Sunnah affirms those attributes. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates for himself, la ta'khudhu sinatun wa la noom, that he does not take, that Allah does not take uh, rest, he does not need rest. Well unknown, and he does not need sleep. So Allah negates for himself sleep, and Ahl Sunnah negates for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sleep. So Ahl Sunnah uh, accepts the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they came in the Quran, as they came in the authentic Sunnah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.